Welcome today to our in-depth education. We have a new topic and I know you are going to love this session. This session is on the price of pride and we're going to examine the cost and consequences of overconfidence. If you checked out our session last week, we had the dynamic we talked about was shame. So this week is all about pride. So welcome to class. So this is a really crucial part uh, of human behavior is to understand pride. And it is definitely something that we tend to overlook in human behavior, especially when we're working with clients or when we're working on ourselves because people don't pay you, they don't come to you and say, I have pride and I'd like to dissolve that. So most of the time people are coming because they have a pain point that they wish to dissolve with you. So what's interesting is you have to think about like, why is pride and we're not working on pride as much. And maybe there's a lack of awareness when it comes to what, how pride actually affects us, which hopefully watching this in-depth education, you'll have a deeper look into the dynamics that are at play with pride. And it's also not knowing the implications or the, how it affects our, our relationships. And so we want to be able to recognize because sometimes we have to get the, the external feedback from the outside world to recognize that we are having a prideful moment. And so when we need that external uh, um, feedback mechanism, it's because we're not in touch with ourselves and what's going on. And so what's also interesting is depression. We tend to know when we're depressed, we're sad, we want to stay in bed, maybe we cry, we withdraw. And so there's really great uh, feedback to let us know when we're in depression and then maybe the outside world lifts us up. And then you go into say, there's mental health plans for people with depression. There is uh, campaigns like, are you okay? That really help people to start that conversation with depression, but there's not going to be, and I don't think anytime soon, a government campaign to dissolve your pride. And I don't think that's going to get any traction uh, in social media either. And so today, that's why I want to talk about this particular topic, because I know it's an, it's an unspoken topic, but it definitely needs to be brought out into the arena of human behavior so we can talk about it more and then look at the dynamics that we have going on. And so maybe if we dissolve some of the pride that we have, it'll also help us to have that less of that polarizing swing between feeling shameful about ourselves and prideful as we dissolve both sides. So that is is why we're looking at today and covering the pride matrix. If you love the resource that we have for this session in the comments below, type in pride and we will get that resource to you today. Also, if you're watching the replay, please just type replay if you're watching live here. Anytime you have an insight comment, put it in the chat. Love to know. So welcome to the session on the price of pride. So let's first of all, like define what pride is and we can have a deeper understanding of what that is. And so really it, uh, it, it has an impact on our self-worth and it has an, a, a, an ability to inflate our sense of self and to a point of feeling superior or bigger or greater than others around us. And so, uh, Pride is essentially a self-conscious emotion that you feel within you and it definitely plays a role in human behavior because there are different types of pride that we can have. We can have pride that is um, a, an authentic pride, let's call it that, where we feel like we um, are congruent. Oh, actually, that's probably not the best word to use, actually. Let me redefine that. So there's pride that we have that maybe builds us into having greater confidence in ourselves and it gets us moving. Someone who I think of in this, when I read um, about their beginning journey when they started Facebook, so Mark Zuckerberg, when he started Facebook, super interesting in terms of how he was actually driven because he wanted to compete with the people in his uh, in his uh, at Harvard University, and he wanted to do better than other people, and so that gave him this like external motivation and pride within himself that he wanted to do better. So, and it came 
um, you know, there was a service to humanity with that. Um, and then we also have different types of pride, which maybe you might say, say, sometimes Donald Trump might have an, ar an, an arrogant pride to him where he talks uh, and he thinks he's he's better than other people um, and so there's different types of pride that we can have and they show in different ways but what we want to know is like what is the essential cost when we have pride like what's the cost of that in our experience of life because we can be blinded to the opportunities in front of us and we can make des uh, decisions based upon the information that we're filtered to see this and we've missed out on this information or we're only seeing something within ourselves and building ourselves up and we we make decisions that end up humbling us somewhat or getting us to um, help us to well the outcome gets us to help us to see the bigger picture we can also have strange relationships not strange <laughs> strained so what happens is when when there's pride involved sometimes it's just really hard I don't know if you felt like this with someone that you know but I'm um, someone I'm in particular I think and I'm just like it's just so hard to kind of just like move past this veil of proud and pride that that encompasses them and this kind of persona that they've built up around and particularly when they talk about um like money uh, relationship business there's like a lot of pride I'm thinking and so it's really hard to have a real authentic relationship with someone when they're when they're playing that persona or that role and then we also do stagnate with our growth as we get to a point especially if we think we're great and how well are we doing there's no there's sometimes not a lot or no room for growth and development and so we stunt our growth and we stunt our development by buying into the pride so one of the things i often say to people especially when they've come into maximum growth and they're doing the mindset evolution membership and we have a demartini method class each and every week for the entire year and so one of the because we focus for two um, one of the months on um, pride whatever we've looked up to and admired and part of that is a, is acknowledging when you're in pride and i'll ask people like how did do you know when you're experiencing pride and most people like no like i really have to kind of think about it it's like you know when you're in depression you want to cry and and it's you, you can feel the tension in your body and you can feel your facial muscles all stressed and uh, but then when how do you know and so it could be a really great indicator that if you're not aware of it then your pride could be essentially blinding you and so what would you have to start to notice about when you're in those moments and how do you define those moments in your physical body in the way that you speak in uh, the the way that you view and look at life or the language that you use so maybe it can be something that you can start to think about and see how how pride shows up for you so that you can start to shift that dynamic so we're going to go into the pride matrix together now. So this is something I've been thinking about when I did the pride, I did the shame matrix. I was like, oh yeah, cool. Let's do, let's do pride as well. Let's just do, let's put it together in, in a pride matrix matrix. And what I love about this team, and I hope you love it too, is or, uh, what I love, especially with Maximum Growth Academy, is giving you frameworks for you to think about human behavior at a different level, maybe a more visual level. And so you're able to then see when you have a client or within yourself, it's like, okay, I can notice I'm going through a pride at the moment. And then how is it showing in life? And so hopefully this model will give you a deeper insight into that. So before we go deeper into that, I just wanted to cover a couple of things. So when we, because we use this particular model, the self and um, other outward and inward direction. So we use this a few times in some of the models that we do inside of Maximum Growth Academy. So let me just give you a, a little rundown of what this looks like. So when it comes to human behavior, we can either be outwardly directed or we could be inwardly directed. So who is it being uh, directed to? And then when we take the next layer up, we then have a target to our direction. So we then either, is it a focused on self? Are you going and going inwards with your direction and targeting towards self or are you going outward and targeting towards others? So these are the dynamics we play with when we are focused on our model that looks like this. So when it comes to pride, 
there's the first one, which is then this inward, but it's um, it's a it's about other people. So there's a there's a direction and a focus, and the target is towards others. And so envy is that feeling that bubbles up inside you where you have envy. And so envy can be shown as uh, God, I wish I did that. I can't believe they're doing. I want to be doing that. And there's internal dialogue that you have going on inside of your mind. And there's a sense of inadequacy that you feel within yourself relative to this particular individual. We can end up fostering or creating inside of ourselves a self-pity, a pity party going on for you. It strains our relationships because there's 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 tension between uh, you and the other individual. And then also it can build up resentment towards that particular individual. So envy is essentially going to rise when you perceive that someone else is doing something that you want to be doing or gaining something that you want to gain. And then you're feeling like you don't have it. And so we can end up creating bitterness within ourselves because of it. And so that is minimizing our qualities or our abilities or our genius zone and where our strength lies and our unique story and then in essence trying to live like them or be jealous of what they're experiencing even though they have a different value set they have different life they have different um, voids that drive them so so as a road of um, a result of that that those experiences happen and so what happens is it's due because so envy comes because you're comparing so comparing happens that you compare yourself to someone else and it can be someone that you know or don't know so it doesn't have to be someone who who you're familiar with but it can be someone you see on social media and then all of a sudden you say, I'm so envious of the lifestyle that they're living or the uh, clients that they're seeing or something XYZ and so that's that comparison is already already splitting uh, your your perception of yourself and them and then creating this disharmony and discord within you and so the greater that discord between you and them is the greater degree of disharmony you have within yourself and also jealousy or um, envy that will bubble up inside and as we know that if we're doing that after a while we'll just get resentful um, either of ourselves or others and so we can also stop taking action I think that's a really great uh, point to also cover is with envy enviousness I don't know if that's a word but that'll do um, enviousness you're not taking action because you see someone else doing something and they're off taking action they make get, move, mover and shakers they're doing things and then you're not taking action and so then you're envious of someone but you you're expecting the results with the work that you don't do so that's envious when it comes to pride and so the next one we're going to focus on is self delusion this is the inward one. So this is when we we our target goes inward and it goes towards self when it comes to pride. And when we feel that pride come up, then we have this like dynamic that that um, bubbles up inside of us where it can be more self delusion. And I, you maybe not necessarily call it that. Maybe that's a more extreme word for it, but there's an element of denial within yourself. And so you're ignoring your, um, through the pride, you start to ignore your personal limitations. You set unrealistic expectations. You unrealistically evaluate yourself. And so we have this then maybe like a, a false sense of what our capability is. And then we have a delusion because of the pride, the building up, how great am I? Then there's this self delusion that happens inside. So it's like um, being over optimistic of what what your capability is. I don't know if you've ever trained at the gym where you think, oh my God, I'm I'm so capable of doing this. And then you go to do it and you're like, nope, I can't lift that weights or I can't do that movement or you pull an injury because there's um, the, the, the pride dynamic and self delusion of what's possible and what's capable, your body's maybe capable. And so this, this is rooted in our perception of ourselves and our 
let's say, inflated perception of self. And so we then feel pride within ourselves of the maybe some of the accomplishments we achieve, but it can distort our sense of reality as a result. And so we want to be aware of this because if we think that, let's say we're going to start a new program and start delivering a new program and there's this self-delusion side that's that's um, activated within you, then there can be this unrealistic expectation that when you go to present it, it's going to be very engaging and people are going to love it, that you're going to get bums on seats and fill the whole room up. And so there can be this inflation of, of ability and then the results don't match or life doesn't match the ability. And it's because you're ignoring the skill set that you're still growing. You're ignoring the maybe personal limitations that you have. And so the self-delusion uh, blinds you or gets in the way. Okay, hopefully you're loving it. If you are, drop in the comments, share your insights and realizations. So the next is around dismissiveness. So this is where when we experience pride and we're feeling puffed up, that the target then becomes towards towards others and it's outwardly focused and there's dismissiveness, dismissiveness, which means that there's a perception that others' achieve, achievements, there's like or undermining other, others' achievements and, and feeling like your achievements are better uh, and, and negating others' achievements. And so there's like a lack of, maybe like a lack of respect of other people's ideas or contributions. There's uh, um, maybe undervaluing their their um, their experience that they have, and so again, there's a disconnect in the relationship because the individual is not being valued for who they are and what they bring to the table. And then there's an there's an element of pride that blinds you from being able to learn from, say, the bum on the street to the billionaire. You can learn from anyone. And so being open to new opportunities because the, the pride is blinding, of, of blinding you. So then the next is, so from dismissiveness, we then have the full, this is your full matrix here, is overconfidence. And this is within self. So, and this is outwardly expressed as overconfidence and then there's like excessive self-assurance. You just know what you're doing. You dismiss others. You're overestimated what you're possibly capable of doing. And so this is where your judgments are um, distorted and influenced when you're in this period, when you're in this kind of um, experience. And there can be uh, maybe impatience shows up somewhat a little bit more in this state because you want to you're not you're not as patient with other people's ideas or other people's thoughts. And there's an element of impatience because you want to just get going. And so we can sometimes be more risk taking in this overconfidence. And so if we think that. You see this sometimes in the market where someone uh, is like overconfident in their ability in the market, then they just go and buy and they, they're a bit uh, like a bull at a gate. They just go and go and not really thinking about it and just overconfidence and somewhat maybe even cocky with it. Maybe that's like the next level up. And so the overconfidence, what happens is the outside world gives that beautiful feedback to get you back into balance or the market gives you um, some feedback to get you back into balance. And so that is um, another dynamic that plays out when we're looking at the pride matrix. So let me cover them all again for you just to do a wrap. We have the pride matrix, which is a great opportunity when someone comes to you and you can think about, okay, so uh, maybe this particular individual has some pride that we could work on in a session, or maybe there's something within myself that I'd like to work on when it comes to, when it comes to pride. And so instead of going, well, when is a moment that I'm in pride? You could ask, when's a moment that I've been envious of someone else? When's a moment that they're dismissing someone else overconfident? When am I being overconfident? And how does that look? Because sometimes what happens is when it comes to human behavior and trying to solve someone's dynamic and when someone says, I, um, I'm feeling inadequate, we often think about, okay, so what's the pain point and go to the benefit and try to shift it from that perspective. 
But hopefully this model will start to give you to start to look at different dynamics and go, oh, okay, so maybe if there's inadequacy, maybe there's an element of, of jealousy or envy relative to someone else that's creating the inadequacy in the first place. And then what's the pride that's attached to that? And then how do we shift that dynamic in order for them to get a greater and deeper healing for them or for yourself? So that is a wrap for our session for today. Hopefully you have loved the price of pride. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being on this journey with us. And anytime that you have a particular topic that you'd love us to cover, feel free to just send me a, a, a message. Also, if you want the download, just uh, if you're watching the replay, it's underneath. You would have already seen that. If you're watching the replay in our Facebook group, then just type in pride and we will get the, the resource to you. So thank you so much, team. I hope that you have a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. And I look forward to seeing you at the next perfect time.